Hi guys, um, it's Friday the 15th of October and I'm out in the Pilansberg and I'm starting up what I'm hoping to make a regular feature on the channel. Uh, I'm going to call it the Friday feature for now and uh, we'll see how it goes but for the next uh, three or four Fridays I'm out in the Pilansberg so hopefully I can do you know four consistent videos with the uh, different themes uh, for each uh, day. I am here at the uh, Fish Eagle picnic spot and I just had my breakfast and uh, for today's feature I actually wanted to do a, a long-term review of um, my uh, a7 III, uh, my Sony a7 III um, and maybe um, give a hint at uh, what I'd like to see in the a7 IV. Um, so Sony have uh, announced that they may be launching the a7 IV as early as uh, next week on the 21st of October um, which will replace this a7 III and um, I'll give you a rundown of some of the features I would um, love to see in that camera um, if I actually want to replace this a7 III that I'm shooting with at the moment. So um, I think to start off uh, let's go back three years to May 2018. Um, I had been following the uh, Sony cameras already, uh, the a7 III, uh, um, sorry, the a7 R3 had just been uh, released the year before that and it was amazing, 10 frames per second at uh, 42 megapixels, um, so it was, uh, you know, one of the best cameras that you could get for uh, portrait and studio work at the time. Um, and it shot uh, 4K 30 video as well. So, you know, the video capabilities were quite good as well. So the A7 R3 was released in, in 2017, I think. And later in the same year, uh, Sony released the uh, A9 Mark I, which shot at uh, 20 frames per second and almost made the, the, the whole world uh, stand up and take notice because uh, here they had a um, you know sports and wildlife focused camera with uh, superb uh, autofocus capabilities and shooting you know 20 frames per second on the electronic shutter so I don't think it was um, you know matched at the time. What they did do with both the A9 and the A7 R3 was they replaced the battery and one of the major gripes uh, for Sony mirrorless cameras up to that point had been you know the poor battery life and when they put in the I think it's the NP NPF Z100 I think it's called uh, battery yes so it's the NP-FZ100 battery um, so this battery that's also in the A7 III um, when they invented that battery and put it in their cameras they actually almost doubled the shooting time for both the a7 um, r3 and the a9 uh, well the a9 there wasn't a comparison but the a7 r3 compared to the a7 r2 had uh, you know almost double battery life and i think that was one of the major contributing factors in me then deciding to switch from the canon 7d that i was shooting with at the time to a possible uh, Sony camera and just before I could make my uh, decision on whether I was going to take the A9 or the A7R3 uh, Sony released the A7 III which I think uh, is the entry-level camera full-frame mirrorless camera that uh, almost made Sony because you know the a9 was specialized for you know sports and wildlife and the a7 r3 uh, was portrait and studio work and what the a7 III did was um, make a, an all-purpose uh, camera body that could then uh, you know suit multiple uh, forms of shooting and serve multiple purposes
so um, the A7 III shoots both uh, 10 frames per second mechanical and electronic shutter um, it's um, not as high megapixel count as the A7 R3 it's uh, 24 megapixels um, and the A7 R3 is, is 42.4 so you know you can't crop as uh, much on this camera the autofocus uh, on this camera I think is is excellent um, and obviously then with the mirrorless camera body the weight and form factor is so much smaller and so much more compact that it's ideal for uh, traveling and for someone like me who who needs a very light setup when they um, driving and shooting at the same time um, so I bought this camera in May 2018 and have been shooting with it you know since then um, at the time I bought the 100-400mm uh, lens and I'll actually go into a little bit of detail on this lens in possibly one of the future episodes of this Friday feature um, segment but this 100-400 lens with the camera body on was I think still clocks in at under 2 kilos so uh, the compact uh, you know form factor and and the lightweight actually make it ideal for the work that I do out in the bush so um, I do love this camera um, it was my first Sony camera and you know it will always hold a place in my heart there are a few things uh, that are, can be improved on so the 24 megapixels on this camera is now a bit outdated uh, both Sony uh, and even Canon now have uh, high megapixel mirrorless cameras that um, outshoot it. Canon's R5, for instance, has I think 50 megapixels, and Sony's uh, A7R4 is uh, sitting at I think more than 60 megapixels. So one of the things I'd love to see in the A7 IV is a higher mega megapixel count uh, sensor. And from what I'm seeing and the rumors I'm, I'm hearing, uh, they are saying that it's going to be a 33 megapixel sensor. So that will give you some room to crop and, you know, some flexibility on that end. So you can buy a shorter lens like this, 100-400. Um, One of the things that this uh, camera did have was a um, cropped uh, shooting mode which uh, allowed you to shoot uh, APS-C but then it gave you a 10 megapixel output file um, which was barely usable I mean you can crop from 24 megapixels and still have more um, you know image left um, and rather not shoot uh, APS-C just shoot uh, you know full frame have the full uh, autofocus and, and autofocus tracking capabilities and then crop uh, in post if they can improve that uh, APS-C mode that would be great as well um, I use this camera um, you'll see that it's got the uh, DJI uh, mounting plate so I use this camera now for my mom's videos um, and her YouTube channel the 4K30 Superb but I don't even shoot in 4K30 I shoot in um, HD uh, 24 frames per second um, which is good enough for her channel um i think if they can improve the in-body stabilization for video it will be uh, really great i'm shooting now on the gopro 10 uh, and the gopros have superb uh, in in-body stabilization with obviously some crop i would take the crop on this camera if they can improve the uh, ibis um, for video especially um i think other than that uh, you know this camera has just this fold out um, screen um, which can have its limitations I mean you can only fold it in you know one direction basically so you can shoot up and down but if you are shooting um, you know vlogs and stuff where you need the that screen to rotate um, it can be a limitation I think there are rumors that it uh, the new the uh, the new a7 uh, 4 will have a rotating screen similar to the uh, A7S.
the A7S III, I think it is. Um, so, you know, maybe that will improve the shooting uh, uh, of uh, vlogs and things like that, like that, and using this camera as a vlogging camera because it's got superb uh, video uh, capabilities already. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, improvements in the video quality are going to be much uh, of a difference if I'm looking at the camera. Uh, if it shows 4K 60, you know, um, that will be good, but uh, 4K 30 for me is fine because, like I said, I shoot in, in HD. Um, I think overall, uh, that's almost uh, as much I can, as I can expect from the camera. Obviously, the pricing point is, is going to be important. I don't know if I'm going to jump to the A7 IV immediately uh, because, like I said, I've got the A9 and I'm shooting with the A9, uh, you know, uh, almost exclusively now uh, and using this more for video. If they do improve the tracking capability uh, on the A7 IV uh, and, you know, maybe if it can match the A9, which Sony sometimes, you know, do, uh, does, they don't really care about cannibalizing their own products because um, their top end camera is now the A1 which is you know uh, 120,000 rands so I think for the A7 IV they could improve the autofocus capabilities and the tracking and the eye autofocus to a level that's maybe you know matching the A9 I if it can match the A9 II that would be superb and you know it would be something I would consider the camera for. Um, I think overall as a, as a long-term camera um, review I couldn't be happier. I think it was the right decision at the time to switch from Canon to Sony. Canon's uh, mirrorless offerings at the time weren't that great. Um, they didn't have you know full-frame mirrorless um, until a few years back and uh, then it was, you know, the, the, the Canon R and the RP, which didn't uh, actually even compare to this uh, A7 III. Uh, so, you know, if I didn't switch at the time, I would have been waiting a long time to switch. Um, and then combined with this 100-400 mm lens at the, you know, when I started shooting with it, um, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a, a better combination to be out in the bush with. Um, the 200-600 was released later, so now if I was to, um, you know, be asked for a recommendation, I would say uh, as an entry-level system, the A7 IV, uh, when it gets released, and the 200-600 would make a superb uh, entry-level combination. It's still going to cost you, you know, north of 80,000 Rand in total for the camera the, the 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 lens and the batteries and and cards and stuff um but you know it may be worth the investment at the end of the day um so yeah this is my a7 III uh, my uh, pride and joy the one that i fell in love with and moved to sony with and um, yeah the one i'll always use as a benchmark for any new camera that I buy. Uh, any new camera has to outperform this one to be able to, you know, replace it in my bag. So let's see what Sony comes up with next week when they release that uh, A7 IV. Um, you know, maybe I can get in touch with the guys at Sony and maybe I can get a body in quite quickly. The global chip shortage is actually um, you know slowing down shipping and stuff so I don't see uh, that camera even getting here before maybe January February next year and then you know perhaps I'll be ready to shift uh, systems and jump to that one but uh, yeah let's see what they actually announce uh, next week and what the reviews look like once it's out